Okay, I'm gonna try. Are you ready? There we go. Oh, refused. You got him. Yeah, he came back. Sometimes they do. Sometimes they do. He, oh yeah. He did not want to eat it that first look. It's not going to be a hot day, but there's lots of hoppers, guys. And I have a feeling that we will be doing quite a bit of prospecting with hoppers. Yep. Obviously, always looking for bugs, always looking for hatches. Um, who knows? We might get a bit of that because it is a little overcast, although they are calling for a mix. Right? We'll a see what happens. Cloud, so. But this is the day that after two and a half months of hot, hot, smoky skies, uh, we finally got a break in the weather. Uh, two days ago, just went from 35 down to nine above, and it poured rain three inches four inches of rain and now everything's cool yesterday was the changeover day and we're hoping that we might be able to sight fish we might be able to have hoppers we might be able to do a bunch of stuff but the point is i've got about eight fly boxes in my pack yeah. just in case yeah we have quite a load of flies <laughs> don't we yeah yeah so yeah come along for the ride guys here we're gonna have some fun on this one um poke around see some neat stuff and as you know with us it's like hey let that day unfold there's always some neat moments that can occur and also wanted to mention if you haven't subscribed please do subscribe to our channel we'd love to have you on board um, we share stuff consistently and make sure that you look we get a lot of questions make sure you look below this video we get heaps of questions what rod what shoes what pants what everything all of our gear list is listed in our affiliate links and any purchase that you make through our affiliate links in the write-up below this video will go to supporting us in our channel so come along let's go find some magic and see if we can't find a brown or two. So we we're just saying that there's lots of potential to this day um, in various spots for sure but it's going to be an interesting one you know the lights changing um, we want to sight obviously as much as we can we will fish the the water that makes sense um, but yeah it's uh, it's kind of a, a tweener day you know it's not a lot of heat not a lot of um, bug activity on the horizon. So right now guys I got a nice bucket right along shore here where um, this gravel drops off and uh, Dave's been up on the bank sight fishing and he can see most things but still gonna take a few casts in that. Doesn't matter if I smack the water those flies are intended to bring and induce a, and induce a fish to come so If there was one there, one more spot and then we'll carry on looking together. Once again, guys, a really nice trough in front of me. It's, it's peppered with a series of really nice boulders and you just don't know where a fish is holding tight. 
It hasn't decided to be incredibly active yet today and you don't know where he's going to pop out of. Start to work upstream here a bit. Okay, you can see everything over? Okay. Well guys, we got a big, long, slow, kind of flat pool. We've got a nice, faster run leading into it, but there's a lot of depth um, right in front of me. And give the occasional twitch to these flies because we gotta, we gotta see if anything's gonna stir from the bottom. No sign of life, no rises as yet, no bugs as yet, but there's tons of hoppers on the bank in the grasses. We're starting to work up into water that's got some faster flow. And there's gotta be a fish in here. There's just gotta be a fish in here. But I've still got a really nice run and I'm focused in the water that's moving. That's where the hope is in my, my mind, based on where we're at later in the season, later in the summer. It is lower waters and, you know, that's, that's where most of these fish I think are gonna be, is up in this faster stuff. Oh, I saw that little 10 incher coming. Yeah, right off underneath that stick over there. Definitely on the hopper. Was well, not a big fish at all. Right across, right across to that bank, right behind that stick, right along those rocks. Dare to dream. Ah, uh, oh, sorry little buddy. Oosh, off. No, he's there. Sorry, little buddy. I just saw a rise, so I thought, okay, here we go. And this is a case where you don't even have to touch this fish. Just grab the head of the foam, lower your hand down right to the water, and just go, click, done. I don't want to go too far into the pool right off the hop, though. Just because you got to cover that stuff. Protect the edge. You don't want to spook anything. See, what I'm doing here is starting this side on this flat water. And eventually here, that'll buy me opportunity to go across without fear of lining anybody. That way I can get right to that seam line over there. Let it sit and twitch, sit and twitch, sit and twitch. But, you know, one more further across. There's a couple submerged rocks in there. I'm just going to go dump, dump, dump. Oh, geez. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm, uh... I'm doing a good job with these guys right now. Gorgeous little brownie. Cute little guy. <laughs> okay. Awesome-o. Okay, up. Right along the edge of this seam here. Twitch it. I've only fished this section once before, and I got a couple real nice 20, 21 inch rainbows right here. Um, I don't know if they're gonna be as excited to see my hoppers today after the cold fronts have come through. Yeah. Oh, there he is. Gorgeous brownie. Yep. Stunner. Just absolutely popped on my beetle. But the beetle again, eh? Not the hopper. It might be because that's the first fly that they're seeing. Fold that. See? The lower I go, the more amiable she is to turning. And there we go. Ah, 18, 19 inch female, male. Yeah, small male. You know, one of those vibrant little buggers. Awesome. Right in, right in there. See how I did that right under the head shelf there? That's just to get anybody nosed into that drop off. Just in case somebody's sitting there. And I'm slowly moving my way in quite deliberately take it into this water. I mean, there's a million different ways of doing this, of course. That's just how I want to go about it. Right in here. See, I'm going to cast up on the shallow, downstream end off that shelf, try to get that drift all the way through there. Okay, so see how close I'm getting to this? I'm still going to work this water here, right off that drop-off zone. High stick it. That's where that long leader comes in. Okay, there we go. Now, okay, let's shorten this up right in here. There he is. Yeah. Yeah, I had to shorten everything up. That way, I was on top of it, eh? Yeah, I the figured. Full control. Woo, had to be there. 
Last time it was two rainbows, today it's two browns. And it's that water, you know, that peak of summer water where they've been holding out, hankering out in the summer, just getting that oxygenated flow nose right into that fast water. And it's almost unfair because you know they have to be there. Because a week ago when it was 35 Celsius, well, guess what they're doing? They're just enduring. Now that it's 10, 12 above, 14 above, guess what? They're happier and more vibrant. Wicked. On the hopper this time. No, so as I was saying, um, Amelia had that really nice, about 200 yards of long trough, deep, bouldery water down below us against that bank. Not gonna happen. You can't just think of today. Yeah, it's cool today, it's gorgeous today. The weather changed, big rain, heavy rain, cool water. Two days ago, three days ago, it was 35 above and hot and it had been stonking hot all the way leading into that so why would those fish be in that water down there that still water if anything they're gonna be low especially the one or two fish that might have been in the in the big pool you know they might have been kind of lurking looking for hoppers but after that cold pre uh, pressure front goes through gonna be hunkered on the bottom streamer fishing sure but the most vibrant and obvious fish, easiest to catch fish, are going to be in this right here. And while Amelia had 200 yards of prime water, well, no, 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 no. I was, I, I'm happy taking this every day of the week because that's where you're going to get that reactionary take, the most deliberate take. And if anybody's active, they're coming to eat hoppers. So we got a couple really nice seams coming in here, guys. and some great drop-offs. I'm right above a nice boulder right now. Get another cast a little, little further over here. Before I work up, I'm gonna start to do a cast a little further over. Yes, nice fish, beauty fish, right off of those, right near those boulders and right at the head. He just came and smacked that. Awesome. That's a nice fish. Yeah, awesome, man. That's sweet. Yeah, that's a good brownie. Yeah, looks to be a nice, nice fish. Oh, yeah. Had to be one. That was such good looking water. Okay, and in the net. Yeah, yeah, that's a really nice fish, guys. I'd say that's definitely upwards of 22, 23. Yeah, beautiful brown. You figure that's the one you saw, hey? Definitely. Awesome. Hey guys, so yeah, it was really nice. So this is just, what I've been fishing here is a long, deep pool. And again, leading into it, is this faster water choppy dancy water and right along that drop-off zone i'll just show you with the camera here right out in here only a couple rod lengths away from me maybe maybe three rod lengths is a couple beautifully placed boulders and there's quite a number of them and that fish just came up right off of basically the inside one um, after i got a drift above him and yeah i mean just gorgeous fish um really enjoyed that there had to be a good one in here david actually seen a good one that he wasn't sure it, it moved off he wasn't sure if maybe it had seen him up on the bank but there was no guarantee of that it just decided to move off and it stationed higher up here and it was just a means of okay get some good good casts with uh with the hopper I decided for myself I was better off just going with the one fly today. So I just have this, uh, looks to me to be about probably a size four hopper, uh, maybe six, between four and six. I think it's a four. Um, but yeah, good size hopper pattern here. It's got the under, under the deer hair, we've got a little bit of um, the, jeez. Uh, Polly, couldn't think of the word. Dave just reminded me, Polly. And that has helped that to float really nicely. And of course you got the legs and whatnot. And yeah, that fish just came in and sucked it in. So beautiful brownie, um, definitely worth, worth the cast. There may be another fish in here. I haven't worked all the way across this. So I'm gonna continue to do that and we'll see if there's another one. 
Okay guys, so here's the same uh, situation again on these floodplain rivers. If you look right along shore here, you see all that? There's hardly a, a bigger rock for a fish to hold on if there's water there. So if you take that and you go right to the water's edge all the way across, well, where are the fish holding? And that's when you look at a big, long, flat glide like that, you go, okay, if there's not a big rock or deflection or a log or something on that shoreline, there better be some depth, something different. Otherwise, there's no way there's going to be a fish hold there. You might get the odd one uh, that's, that's kind of in in progress of moving up to, you know, later in the year, come talking September, October, November, to spawn. But otherwise, you know, you're not going to see too many resident fish uh, especially if the water levels fluctuate and push, they're just not going to hang out here. They're just going to they're not going to waste that kind of energy to sit there swimming, swimming, swimming. Now they need breaks, and you can look along this stuff, and there's very, very few little subtle seam lines on the water surface that indicate uh, current breaks. So you know Amelia's across, she's looking. Obviously, I'm going to look right at the base of that shoreline on that far side because that steep steep gravel that's like this to the water indicates the deepest part of this is probably along that shoreline and it might be two or three feet deep there but not too much more than that so just if it's not a high probability not till we get to the top of the run all right boy i think one rainbow one brown yeah right in there oh 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 yeah big head big male okay went right through his lips we're gonna rest that that's a big male okay I'm gonna try are you ready there we go. Oh, refused. You got him. Yeah. yeah, he came back. Sometimes they do. Woohoo! Sometimes they do. Perfect. He, oh, yeah. He did not want to eat it that first look. Oof, good fish. Not huge, huge, but a nice, real nice solid. Wicked. Yeah. And because there's no current break. Yep. Down you go. There we go. Head up. Keep that head up. Keep it up. Stretch for the sky, Dave. There we go. Awesome. That's gorgeous fish. Beauty. Woo. Gorgeous fish. Okay, guys. So as I was saying on the way up, nothing but nothing but nothing for holding structure all the way up here just a big gravel wash flat and as i said the fish <laughs> if there's gonna be a fish it's gonna be right in this tongue here and there's a rock slab underneath all that wave up there and that's where that fish when it first came up just kind of pushed upstream and that that beetle went right through his lips and i was like oh no and then i thought hmm what if i got rid of the hopper and it wasn't necessary. Uh, the point of getting rid of the hopper was to slow myself down, rest the fish, and let the fish say, you know what? Okay, I'm back to normal. Two minutes later, put the beetle back through, right through there, and he came up, refused, and he circled back around, and he came up and sucked in the beetle, and it was like, that's the one. But then, of course, as you're fighting it, well, if there's no holding water down here to hold a fish, there's no current breaks, well, now you're going to have a fight, and that, unfortunately, that you know, I just you can turn them, but you can't turn them because there's nothing to to wedge them, force them, pull them across to. No current breaks, and so you, uh, you end up going about 50, 60 meters downstream instead of just a nice in behind a rock, land it, net it, let's go. So it takes a little bit longer in in these situations to actually slow a fish down when there's absolute no current breaks whatsoever. Okay, so. I don't know, I'm gonna try that again. Just leave myself into that shelf. And then after that, that'll be Amelia's turn. So the eternal question is, is there two? My money says, nah, not like that. Maybe there's a 14 incher in the head, but there won't be another 
22 incher here just can't see it especially not since we just went had a little tug of war there smack that on the surface upstream mend except for the downstream howling wind and we're just going to move up here right not any further just keep doing the same distance of casts keep everything in, in check and just keep doing what you're doing the whole way up little reach up off that shelf you know just a little mend like that such a low probability now right in there smack it oh that's that little guy <laughs> Six, eight inches. Not gonna hook him. May not be the same caliber, but oh, whoa, oh, oh, whoa, oh, oh, whoa, oh. whoa. Okay, see what happened there? Is out of control, guys. Um, too long a cast. Going over top of this seam right here into the next seam. So I'm just gonna move, shorten that line. And the other thing is just check on everything. And now we're gonna control our casts again. There is a 16 inch fish here. I'm just gonna work this water. And we're gonna do, work it really well. Um, if he doesn't come back on this, that's where I put the hopper on instead of the beetle. Right in here. Let's just see. Catch up to that line. Right in there. Okay. Wait for that wind. Oh boy. Just like that, eh? So we're going to be patient. There we go. Right in. Right in there. He hit pretty hard, though. There he is. Yeah. Boofa. Sweet, sweet. So if anybody at home is going, why is Dave out fishing Amelia right now? Well, look at what I've fished today versus what she's fished. She's fished two long troughs of slow water and only the head of one of them had faster flowing water. Me, I've fished two spots and in both spots, I've had faster flowing. Look at that. There we go, gorgeous little fish. Okay guys, so as I was saying while I was fighting that fish, now, what have I got, a half dozen fish, I don't know, one, two, three, four nice ones, and a couple of little guys. So you're going, well why is Dave catching so many fish and Amelia's only caught the one? Well, Amelia for one didn't set the hook on those little fish along that troughs, but more to the point, if you look at the water, um, and you think peak of summer and oxygen, and I go, Where's that gonna be? That's gonna be right here. And you'll notice in right here, I got two fish, two really nice fish. And at my first stop, I got two really nice fish into that shelf, that Riffley shelf. Both places were have to be. And what I mean by that, this is broken surface. The further you get away from the broken surface, depth, current, and oxygen, the fewer fish there'll be. And in Amelia's case, she's worked two really nice long runs with no current with no fast water, no has to be a fish there. So right now I've fished two such spots, Amelia's fished none. So that's why I'm catching the fish, she's not. We're gonna set that straight up ahead. But I just wanna make a point that that's, that's the massive difference between the habitats uh, on August 19th, I think it's 15 Celsius out here, but three days ago and prior to that for the last two months, it's been 30, 35 degrees. These fish have to be in this kind of water right now. And just because it cooled off, are they gonna drop out? No, not, not unless it stays cold. Not unless, you know, it's clear water, it's low water. They overhead cover, oxygen, food, everything is right there. If they move, they're just only gonna expose themselves and they're gonna move to places of slack water where there isn't any oxygen and they ain't gonna do that. All right, guys, well, I've got some sexy looking wood up ahead of me. Um, so I'm really going to focus on that in this kind of run because again, as you've heard from Dave, really a lot of these fish today have only come, they've really only come from water, oh, smackos, but not big, <laughs> from water that uh, has fast flowing, inflowing um, bits to it. So it's just, it's not, oh, there we go, yeah, oh! I wasn't expecting that. Oh, come on. Those are smaller fish, I guess. It's just that it smacked it so hard. Wow, that had me. That's funny. <laughs> wow, that just had me. Mostly because the first one was small and then that second one just took it down. 
All right, guys, I've put on a beetle pattern here, partly because Dave's had some great success today. Mind you, it's been all about the water that he's been in. And for me, I just want to go with this smaller size beetle simply because these last few takes here kind of confused me a little bit. I didn't, I didn't think that they were bigger fish, but the one kind of had me with the take. So, and there was one that just pushed the fly as well. So, okay, let's get up ahead of me here. There had been one that rose while I was putting this on. So let's just pop that in there. Oh yeah, nice fish. That's a nice fish, you know, he's probably 14 or so. Maybe a bit bigger, but that's cool, man. That's a really nice brownie, I think. Good change, love. Bigger than, yeah, definitely glad I changed up. That's cool. There we go. No, 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 no. Come on, in the net, there you go. Yeah, like I say, it's longer than I thought. <laughs> so totally misjudged size, guys, on that fish. When I, when I first hooked up and got a quick look at it, I was thinking, yeah, 14, 15. Oh, no, no, it turned out to be about 18 inches. Yeah, and ni nice fish, really nice fish. Sure, there's just a pileup of logs. And, you know, my intention was just to start, you know, short, always my side and fish it and work my way over. And of course, you know, that first fish that popped, I'm sure was the fish I had seen rise, um, was not expecting it to be of that size. And so that was really cool. I enjoyed that moment. That was probably the best moment for me today so far. Um, yeah, so uh, onwards and upwards, uh, as soon as we rest this pool a little bit and then we'll, I'll get back at it. Make sure that I cover this stuff, right? on the downstream side of this whole pileup of logs, just in case there's somebody in that. It's a little bit quick. I much prefer the water ahead of me and there is a nice drop off as well. So I'm gonna cover that. Okay. Yeah, little guy. This one truly is, I think, 12 or 14. Few fish in this pocket though. Enjoy that part of it. Yeah, this guy's about maybe, maybe 12. Hmm. There we go. And pop it out and away he goes. 